Yeah. Hey, good morning, everyone. Man, I'm so glad to be here with you. My heart is full uh, this morning that the thought of what's happening in the life of our church right now and to be in worship and prayer with all of you. Thank you, Pam. What a tremendous metaphor I think that is for the moment that we're in. I made it two minutes. I hope we can all make it through this next year more than two minutes. Uh, we're going to talk about that here this morning. The joy that I have to be with you, I should tell you, a lot of you heard my name in the prayers. You may know the last couple of weeks of bodily health for me have been, uh, well, let's put it this way. I am so joyful to be here and that's not nothing. So I'm glad, uh, really glad to be here with you right now. I, I want to acknowledge at this moment where there's so much joy and newness and so much going on, if you haven't driven by or been in the Lytham Road building right now, a lot of dramatic things going on over there. Here at Mill Run, you may even have seen or maybe didn't even notice some of the work that happened on the exterior. We did some water and there was some real leakage happening out there and some paint out there and new things are happening here too. There's a, a lot that's exciting right now. There's also some real risk in the life of our church right now. And I wanted to sort of name that for us for a moment. There is, of course, all the obvious, which you might even call like business risk or something. There's a, there's a whole lot going on with construction and finance and all of those things. And that's really important. And in the life of our church, we have really good, talented, experienced people doing really good work, minimizing and managing all of that. I want to talk about a different kind of risk that we face together as a church. As we enter into all these exciting things, I think of several. I think of one of the risks that we may face together over the course of the next 12 to 15 months is that we will all experience, or many of us will experience, different things from one another. We will be uh, disrupted and unsettled and hopeful and excited in different ways. And that can work out really well. That can really strengthen the body. We can grow in mutual understanding and sympathy and empathy. Or we might not. <laughs> Or we might experience different things and not understand what one another are going through. That could happen, but that could happen by personality type. Some of you love change and adventure and you thrive in it. Some of you are like, yeah, not so much actually. You can keep the change, right? Uh, there's different personalities. It could be a little generational difference in terms of what we experience. There can be some difference in the campus communities uh, in terms of what impacts us directly on our midweek ministry schedule or the worship space that we're in. It could be all kinds of different things. And depending on how we journey through this together, outcomes could vary. There's some risk there. There is uh, also some risk of loss of good habits, loss of normal, loss of the things that we're used to. And those good habits can be constructive. Do any of you have things in your individual lives that contribute to like health and growth and when you have them that's good and when they're taken away there can be some loss for you. So like for me uh, I tend when my schedule is regular and things are happening and I'm not too crazy overwhelmed and life is just going to go in normal I tend to have pretty good eating habits. I eat more healthily then. But when like I'm on tilt and I'm working too many hours a week or I have to travel once in a while to, to some boards that I work on or events that I speak at and now I'm on the road and all of a sudden it's fast food heaven and all kinds of things happen. And like, you know, you can lose the momentum that was helping you to grow and be healthy. I imagine you can relate to some of the things that I'm anticipating in the life of our church when rooms have changed and schedule has changed and things that we lean on, things that are spiritually significant to us maybe are different. Now there's, there's some risk involved there. There's also some risk, and I should tell you as I describe this next one, that I have been immersed in the book of Exodus lately. We had the last five verses or six verses of the book of Exodus read this morning. I've been reading really carefully the book of Exodus lately because we are going to be reading and learning from the book of Exodus together this fall. So my head and heart are all in that right now, preparing for that. And in the story of Exodus and books that follow, the Israelites are on a journey from one place to another, from bondage and slavery in Egypt through a wilderness transition time to the promised land that God has for them. And on this, in the wilderness, in the transition time, you don't have to answer out loud, but let me ask you, what do you think they did a lot of during the wilderness time? There's a lot of right answers to that question. Uh, the one I'm looking for is grumbling. <laughs> there was a lot of murmuring and grumbling among the Israelites uh, against one another, against their leaders, against God. They were grumbling against one another. And I would not at all be surprised if we run into a couple of occasions for grumbling over the course of the next year. The, the Israelites themselves, uh, they made some choices. They encountered 40 years of construction delays in the middle of their journey. Um, God forbid that we should experience such a thing. There could be occasions for this. Of course, that's a risk. But it also occurs to me that there is an additional risk. It's sort of, uh, I don't know, it's a little bit meta-grumbling or something. 
Do you think that we might find ourselves with the risk of grumbling about our grumbling? Like, I think I, I could see that in a, in a church community. We could be upset that somebody else is upset. Your, your leaders might grumble about the grumbling or want to scold you. Or, that's not going to help anything, right? That just takes us deeper into the problem. I could go on and on. We could talk about a lot of things. You could generate a whole long list of the risks that we face, and not the kind of obvious ones, but the, the spiritual, the relational, the emotional, the in-the-body risks that we face. But I think underneath most or maybe all of the lists that we could generate together would be this underlying spiritual risk. And that is that we might not have eyes to see. We might think of this next 12 to 15 months or whatever of our life together as being merely the waiting period until the time that matters. We might be thinking, like the Israelites in the wilderness, God's taking us to a promised land, and this is like the God-free zone. This is the dead zone. This is the time. We might just forget that this is the moment where God is revealing himself to us, working in our lives, shaping us into the people that we will be when we get to where we are going. This is the time right now, a time not merely to be survived, but to thrive in our life together with God. Let me give you, I think, some ideas. Let me give you a little bit of suggestions, some lenses, if you will, of what we, how we can grow, what we can pay attention to in God's work in our life together over the course of this next season as we are journeying. The first one is this. Let me suggest that we take this as a time to lean into God's presence, to lean into God's presence. There are lots of things that won't be normal anymore for us. Uh, that could be the schedule of ministries you come to, the room that they were meeting in, some of the stuff that was there. Maybe the people who were there could be a little bit different. If you're part of the Lytham Road worshiping community, the normal space that you go to for worship, we're going to be in a very good space and we're going to be there together. But things that you're used to seeing and being in the midst of won't be the same anymore. Though it's not that those things don't matter. They do. That's why we're caring for them. God works through these physical things to shape us. But for a little while, we won't have the regular ones. And this can be a time that forces us to pay attention to, in all these different ways, why was I doing it in the first place? What is it really all about? How, how is God using these things and what does God want to do in my life? God comes to us in worship, we believe. His presence comes to us through the words of Scripture, the word of the gospel, through the sacraments that we shared today. We come here in the, in the community gathered. We're going to lean into God's presence. What is God trying to do in my heart and in this community over the course of the next year or so as we journey through this together? I would also say along, the, along these same lines, not only are we sacrificing some of our normal, but as a church, as households, as individuals, as families in our church, Many of us, most of us, have made financial sacrifices for the place, of, for the sake of where we are going, because we believe that God has called us. Lean into God's presence as you feel the sacrifice of that sacrifice. And say, God, you are teaching me to depend on you in this moment. You are growing me, and you have not abandoned me. God was still there, as, as Pam taught us a minute ago. He is still the same. His grace is there. As we make our sacrifices, we will feel the loss of something for the sake of something more valuable. Lean into God's presence during this time. Second, lean into God's people during this time. Lean into God's people. A again, as so many physical things will be a little bit altered over the course of this year, that'll be, that'll be a challenge for us. I think one of the reasons is there's so much in life, in our lives, that is unstable, that is unpredictable, that is unsteady from week to week. Things in your physical health, things in your job situation, things in your relational network. There's lots of things that we experience where change is sometimes forced on us or forced on us at a pace that we would rather it not be happening. And so one of the things that church can be for us is steady in that time. It can be like the rock, the normalcy in that time. And now the things that you're used to being normal are also changing. And that could produce, you know, some grumbling or something. During that time when stuff around here is a little different than we're used to, also, we can be there for one another. And God uses the community of his people week after week, regular presence, relational support, and prayer for one another to be a steady means by which he works in our lives. So come and be a part of that. More than ever, be faithful in your small group. Be, be a part of a small group if you haven't before. Be, be here in worship every week. 
Be a part of the prayer, the ministry, the service organizations that you've been a part of. Lean into God's people, not only so that you may receive that steadiness that you need, but so that you may give it to others, because other people need that also. Lean into God's presence, lean into God's people. And third and finally, another lens I'd like to uh, provide for you or coach us into in this next time is lean into God's mission. I know that didn't start with a P like presence and people, did it? Uh, lean into God's missional purpose for our church <laughs> during this next season. One of the reasons that we, probably the central reason, that we believe that God has called us to worship in these two different places that aren't all that far apart, you know, divided by the uh, ever-powerful Scioto River over there. The reason that we are in both of these places is because God has a mission in both of these places. Because there's an opportunity to reach neighborhoods and communities and regions in Upper Arlington and in the Hilliard and Dublin and Columbus and Worthington and people come in from all over. Some of you are from Canal and Grove City and Sunbury and all around. I could keep on going. God has given us an opportunity to be his light and a witness to him in different places where he has planted us. During this time, keep that in mind. And may I ask you, install that in your prayer life that we would pray for how God will work through us, not 18 months from now or 15 or 12 or whatever that's going to actually turn out to be, not just then, but now. Now is a time when new people, like this morning, some of you are here today for the very first time, welcome to the family of God, welcome to the worship of the family of God. During this time, that will continue to happen. Let's pray for how God is using us, ordering and shaping our community life, welcoming and inviting and praying for one another. This is the moment, not later, not when we get the temple and we're just in the tabernacle right now. That was the Israelites' experience in the verse that we read to start, this, to start this time. The Israelites, they were looking forward to the promised land. When they got there, much later, God was going to build a, a permanent temple for them. In the wilderness, they had a tent. They had a, a tabernacle. It wasn't the temple. It wasn't what they were used to. It wasn't, well, they weren't used to it yet. It wasn't what they were looking forward to, but it was the center of God's presence among God's people in that time. That's the time that we're entering into right now, and oftentimes the time that God is doing his best work in our lives. It, it, it struck me as I was reading so much in the book of Exodus recently that so much of the Bible, the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, all had to do with the work of God while they were waiting <laughs> in the interim. We, we'd be missing four and maybe more than that books of the Bible if we weren't paying attention to what God was doing in that time. That's this time for us. Now, I, I want to uh, take an opportunity to share a story with you, and so Kim and Howard are going to come to the front up here. You guys just come to the pulpit up here. Kim has a testimony that we talked about this week, a story of God working through a real wilderness time in her life, and then showing himself to her and growing her faith in a way that would have been unexpected. And, uh, I'm going to ask Kim to share that story, and then Howard is going to lead us uh, in a time of prayer. I hope that you'll be able to draw from this experience also the way that God will show up and work in those times when you thought you were just out in the desert or just waiting, but that's the moment where God is at work. Happy birthday.